Ted, how spicy do you like your food? Uh, milk, milk toast. You're not a spicy boy. I have horrible, horrible stomach acid all the time. So oh, I need no. to like, I'm like order. I'm I'm going to. A, I love Mexican food. I am yeah. so embarrassed. When I go to a Mexican food place and I'm like, can you take the tomatoes out, please? <laughs> <laughs> They're a little too acidic. Like I, I have to do that now for everything, and it, it, yeah. Why, why? What about you, Kevin? Why do you ask? I, I, I just uh, made made myself some uh, some spicy burritos, and oh. I love the spicy, but I have a limit to it. Uh, and every time I ruin food, I feel like it's because I make it too spicy. <laughs> do you? Do you? Is it spicy for too spicy for you, or too spicy for others you're serving? Often too spicy for other people I'm serving. I will suffer through my own horrible spicy food, but I dislike inflicting it on other people when I see the pained expressions on their faces. Yeah, I, I, I my entire life, it, there's never really been a taste with the heat. It's just pain. Okay. It, there's, I don't know if it's a, a lack of certain taste buds or whatever it is. It's just always been like, oh, this is not fun. Uh it's the equivalent of being like, hey, would you like some extra needles in your food? I'll put some needles in your food. <laughs> I did I did not do spicy until um like my mid twenties and I was like, oh, now food is a game I can win. <laughs> yeah, I like the I, I wish I do because I do like the um I bet you and I both have this sort of it's not toxic masculinity, but the sort of old idea of like real real men can can eat all day and drink all the beer and eat all the spicy food. Oh, they yeah, want. yeah. There are no limits to the masculinity or hard drinking, you're spicy eating. You don't have inner biology of any kind. You're a man. Yeah. Yeah. We start, we all start, I think our generation started it with warheads, right? <laughs> that was the like, yeah, just put like 10 in your mouth and see what happens. I hated warheads. I thought Me they too. were just fucking garbage. Uh, but like, I think that's also like, uh, if you have to set a boundary, then you're not a man. <laughs> I know, which is so insane that we make these... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I wish I could partake. I wish I could get into, I don't know, you, you see like the things like those Hot One interviews and stuff yeah. where it's like, there is a, even there though, there's like a culture in the comments that <laughs> if you, if you can't eat more than a certain amount of hot wings, you are an inferior person. <laughs> I mean, that is YouTube. Like the YouTube commenter is a is a crafty foe who just wants to judge people based on the easiest rubric available. True. And I will say, DJ Khaled tapped out at like two or three and made his own chef, made his own wings. And yeah, I'm like, he's a coward. But <laughs> maybe for other reasons unrelated to your tolerance to spicy foods. <laughs> what is that dude's problem with putting things in his mouth? I know, right? <laughs> it's, it can be fun for other people, DJ Khaled. <laughs> what a wiener. Well, now I'm hungry. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, man. I, you're doing this right after work, and I'm doing this right after dinner. <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, you know, not to pit on I, I, I one thing I was going to ask you, Kevin, about, and you know, I guess I'll ask Paul about it in the future when he joins us. Um, Paul's <laughs> Paul's out for the episode. The boy needs rest, so we're putting it, we put him to bed. Yeah, he was seeing his he was seeing his family on the other side of the country. He was doing good deeds, and oh yeah. He, yeah, he needed rest. Oh yeah, shoot! I I forgot we usually do a lie. Paul is in the um, tornado dimension, being <laughs> tortured always, by air elementals. It's always just a different boy, a phantom zone. Yeah, uh, and there's never anything other but one element that just tortures you. Yeah, Paul fell into the visiting his family dimension, and now he is back <laughs> home, but is stuck in the void of catching up on work that he missed over the last week. I was just kind of curious, Kevin, if you you have become aware of the the new i know you're not on tiktok much i'm trying to not get much. you on tiktok but a little uh, bit a little but especially bit. on tiktok and other social media this trend of like npc accounts yeah go on please okay so i'm gonna try to do my best to explain it and it's very i think that's npc's kind of becoming the default term to it but these are real live people on live streams mm -hmm. who are staring straight at the camera and they are essentially kind of acting like an NPC from a video game, not in so much of like, hello, well met, I have a quest for you. But mm -hmm. they are instead repeating like 10 to 20 different phrases or actions based on what emotes or digital gifts are given to them. So like the, the, the most famous one is a, a woman pinky something that's like ice, ice cream. So good. Yum, yum, yum. 
Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I did see that thing. And I was you like I, I closed I closed the tab. Like I just left my computer. <laughs> I was like, it's not it's I've gone too far. It's for the kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> gang, gang 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 gang. Or like someone donates a cowboy hat and then a cowboy hat appears on her head and she has to suddenly start going, Wee, I'm a cowboy. And she makes bank. Like she sure. supposed supposedly is making a ton of money. And since then, uh half of my TikTok feed if I go on live is just different people doing npc characters uh i saw one that was very funny of like a young victorian child that was just like (laughs) she would sneeze or then be like i would like some more food or like cough i like the idea of a a person who is really good at just being a human soundboard or whatever and them finally being like oh shit i can monetize this i'm quitting my job right now to do things that teenagers tell me to do yeah, I think I think a lot of people have had the reaction of, oh, well, this is horrifying. And at first, I also was like, what have we done to society, right? <laughs> uh, and and to take my you know partner Heidi's very good take, she looked at it and was like, I don't see what the big deal is. This is just customer service, <laughs> which is also which also horrifies me. We shouldn't have. We should like we should treat our our, our everyone better, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But I think she related to like, yeah, you know, she used to do like customer service for like Grubhub and stuff, which is like, yeah, you just pick up the phone and you say one of 10 things uh, emotionlessly and soullessly to to get through the time and make people feel better and make your money. And that's just that's part of it. And I, and I was like, that's really smart. And then I was like, I kind of want to make an NPC character myself. And I was going to ask you, Kevin. <laughs> oh, wow. As you're processing this, what do you think your NPC character would be? Oh, geez. Um I, I feel like I feel like my reactions to things uh I'm I'm at a disadvantage here because my reactions to things are a, a slow build. Like they'd send like a frown emoji and like over the next fifteen minutes I would just sort of like you'd see the storm cloud <laughs> forming in my head of something that I don't like or like a an argument in my head that I'm trying to win with a fictional person or something so like each, that. So each, because, and again, these NPCs, they're really successful. You are getting like swarmed by donations and like digital roses and shit. So what you're telling me is you would have a 15 minute delay for each one that's all building. I wouldn't have like an interrupt. I'd, I'd do, um, I do it like Dark Souls where like you could, <laughs> like when you hit the button on a delay, yeah, like uh-huh. you kind of cue the action. Yeah. So, uh, all of the emotes would happen, but like they would be stacked in the queue rather than interrupting each other. I love that. I love that. It's also really you're really making in an era of people who are like, I need instant gratification. They got to really stick around. Yeah, it would be the exact same like pattern. Like I would practice and train myself to like go through the exact same face journey on all of these things. But uh, yeah, you would get to see me contemplate things and just kind of spin out. Uh, and and waste my time. So it'd be like Kevin the philosopher would yeah, be yeah. would be the character. Okay, yeah, I like that. Uh, Chad, I want to hear what yours are, but I've got I've got a thing to throw on the end of this. I feel okay. Um, you know, I, I you know I asked a question. Uh, I I think the obvious one would be like a ska kid. That'd just be kind of pretty fun. <laughs> but you know, just oh, kind man. Of pick it up, pull a little trumpet, and go, bah, 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 you know, just to kind of rotate them in and out. But I but actually, I wonder if it'd be more fun to lean into like just it's summer, it's hot. And maybe I just play like a, a, a like a cool like your local neighborhood pool lifeguard <laughs> guy guy who's not even necessarily that in shape, baby CPR certified. You don't know, and mostly just like hey, no running, no running, uh, or hey, could you get me something from the vending machine? Or poop in the water, poop in the water. <laughs> That's a good bit, and it's it's emotionally distant from like your real your real self. Like you're not yeah. a lifeguard, so yeah. Like, yeah. You could you don't have to take your work home with you. I think my mistake was making it too close to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta distance yourself. I think like you got that way you be able to, you can turn it off when you get when you get out of it. When you turn off yeah. the live stream when you've made ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I got to be able to clock out. I have one where it's just like, oh no, I lost another one. <laughs> oh no, that one's that that one you can make pretty expensive. And then, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's the expensive cop car one. You guys go, yeah. oh yeah, that one. Or ambulance, yeah. I think the problem with this industry is it just seems uh, like ripe for AI to take it over, you know? Yes, this actually would be one. This would be AI plus VTubers. Yeah, you're like super training the AI by doing the same thing over and over and over again. So now it knows which parts to put variants in. Yeah, I wonder if that would actually take away some of the alert. Because I don't watch these streams. They're not for me. 
But I've noticed that whenever I search these NPC streamers, the most popular clips are the time that they break. It's like you're watching SNL not for the sketches, but just to watch Jimmy Fallon break. That makes it an interesting kind of art form in the in the AI like spin up era that we're in right now, or the year of AI spinning up. I don't know if it's going to be a fucking era. <laughs> it might just be yeah, a- God. But yeah, it's like by a, a human doing performance art as a machine is kind of irreplaceable by machines because you don't have the the moment where they break, or maybe you can still have that moment, but it's even weirder. Yeah, the VTuber accidentally said a hate crime or something. And you're like, look at this. <laughs> Get a load of this. Yeah, it's not funny when a human does that, but when a robot does it, it's kind Yeah, when of a charming. robot does it, yeah. <laughs> when a robot goes off on the French Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Goosebuds. My name is Kevin. Welcome to Goosebuds. My name is Chad. Uh, as we said, Paul is Paul is in the uh, family dimension being ripped apart by tornadoes. Yeah uh he cannot be here so we uh kevin and i have the sole responsibility uh normally we cover rl stein books and give them the hard-hitting critique they deserve but today we are returning to a side series uh not read by rl stein but rand jonathan's uh american chillers specifically nebraska nightcrawler nebraska nightcrawlers um we kind of picked this one because it was the one we could find uh, don't tell them that. <laughs> don't let them see that far behind the curtain. That's fine. That's fine for people to know. We, that's we, fine. It's one we could find. And it's the scariest uh, book we could find. <laughs> Honestly, for for like 70% of this book, I, it's it's a ripper. Like it's pretty good, I thought. Yeah. Y- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had some I had some some problems with it, but yeah. you don't have to agree with me, Chad. I think it's more like fifty to seventy percent of this book is pretty good. But I felt so free reading this because I <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's just kind of written like more like energetically than a goosebumps. I feel like shit's happening. We're going forward. The, you know, characters have maybe two traits. Yeah, that is that is helpful. I I think we are pretty much going to be won over. Is if your book has anything happening in the first half of the book instead of just jump scares, makeouts, <laughs> yeah, you immediately jump like most of the tiers of the books we've covered on this show. And this book does have jump scares and fake outs and a few tropes that we despise in in like children's horror literature or young adult horror literature and those are a little inexcusable but there are some excellent parts of nebraska nightcrawlers for one there's some excellent summer vibes going on in this one yeah yeah it really does paint does does feel uh the vibe of what would you do if you had your whole summer to yourself well maybe this one kid (laughs) Starts a small business, gathering nightcrawlers. Yeah, so uh, Jim Newkirk is our main character, uh, and he's joined by his friend Brittany Olson, who uh, lives across the street. They're way out in uh, rural Nebraska, but they're like kind of close to a city. But The know. village of Denton, they say. Denton. Denton, Nebraska. So De- they're in Denton. Uh, they're close to Lincoln, Nebraska, I think, which is the capital of Nebraska. I don't or know. yeah, so he was born in Lincoln. Um, Denton is the town where his parents go uh, later. So that's when they go in town. They go to Denton. But I assume are... these are all real cities. Yeah. I don't know. I've never, I've, I have no history with Nebraska. Yeah. These books wouldn't lie about Nebraska geography. <laughs> And like they have a they have that nice quality of like kind of trying to pander to the state a little bit like the premise is influenced a little bit by <laughs> the the state slightly kind yeah, of yeah yeah I think this and Detroit both had you know the equivalent of like those sort of like novelty tourist gifts that are like only in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like Indiana's made by like what are the first five Google search results? And it's like corn, corn, and David Letterman's face, <laughs> and like a, a, an Indy five hundred car, but it's like stretched to make out the letters. I'm like, you got. I know that you're selling me just the Indiana one, and in every single state, you guys made one for that state. Don't act like I'm special. No, but Massachusetts is special. We've got lobster. Um, yeah, we've got chowder. Um, probably seafood. <laughs> lobster chowder. Lobster chowder. Uh, Chattered Lobster is also pretty good. Um, you got Seth MacFarlane. Oh, do we? I don't know. I just assumed he was from. Is he? Is he like a New England? Uh, yeah. He. 
I know I Family Guy is Rhode Island, though. But... Rhode Island. Sorry. Yeah. To yeah. me, you guys, you're all of those states. You're all so small. Like, <laughs> it's true. I really, I feel like y'all should at some point just go like, we're really just one state. Come on. I mean, we we all share like one football team, basically. <laughs> what, the Patriots? You guys yeah. are all just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm trying to d- destroy the Democratic Electoral College by making you one state. That would actually destroy our country, but it just feels like... <laughs> Oh, become a territory or something. I mean, Massachusetts, is, it's fine to have small states. Like, there are more people live in Massachusetts. Like, our population's large, even if our uh, even if our size is small. That's what that's the kind of idea that Nebraska Nightcrawlers introduces. <laughs> <laughs> so, you talk about Jim. Uh, yeah. Jim. Jim. I think Jim. His, his friend Brittany is, I think, a particularly special young girl in that she is down to spend her late evenings yep gather in the in the mud not to lean on gender tropes but i feel like a 90s yep midwestern or nebraska girl is not going to be so into just i'm going to spend my whole nights in the muck pulling up gross worms and it seems like she's not getting a cut of any of this uh she is she gets four cents a worm that's not enough um well, I actually did the math. Um, and so so Jim says right away that he sells a dozen worms for a dollar. Okay. And later on, Brittany uh, says that she got 65 worms, for which she has paid the sum of uh, $2.60. Okay. Oh, I misread that and thought that was his entire haul. I didn't realize that was her, her haul. Got it. Yeah. Je- she she brought in 65 worms, uh, which for which she was paid $2.60 in 10-year-old money. So, you know. All right, so I'm doing the math. If he sells twelve worms for a dollar, he gets fifty. He gets five dollars and forty one cents, or forty two cents, wherever you draw the the line. Well, no, so yeah, he he's getting he's getting eight cents per worm selling that and giving Brittany four, but he's actually getting eight point three cents per worm. So he's taking point three extra cents for Brittany for being the CEO of this company. Well, he also has to do he he, he has the um equipment. Like he Oh, has you're the, right. You're right. He does have overhead. Although he doesn't have much overhead. We learned that he just kind of he doesn't really tend shop. He like just kind of runs it on the honor system. Yeah, I I don't trust old men who would just come by and leave money in a jar. I don't think that they're doing that, that often. Yeah, he made two hundred dollars last year, which is a lot in for a nine year old to make. Yeah, also nineties time. That's that's like ten thousand dollars now. I think these are the two thousands. Actually, I think I, I I don't know the exact date, but I think this is set in the early two thousands. Okay, I still say even then, that's that's a lot more money. Oh my god! If he gave nine year old me two hundred dollars, like I yeah. would be I would be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy Massachusetts. <laughs> Listen, it's a small state, but it, it's it's a very expensive one as well. I can't buy sure. Massachusetts for two hundred dollars. I would have at this point. But Brittany, I just I just think Brittany's a really special girl to be down to do this. I mean, she's making a little bit of money, but still, it's amazing her dedication. It's cool. Their parents are like fine with them going out at night and rooting around for worms to make profit. I guess like what the hell else are you going to do in rural Nebraska for fun? But. Uh, yeah, uh, Jim's business selling worms is going pretty well, and Brittany seems like a good friend and business partner. Brittany also uh, talks about setting up a lemonade stand across from the worms, so she might also she might be making more money than Jim. On this. oh, you know, I forgot that, that would be smart to sort of have like you lure him in oh, for yeah. the night crawlers, but then you make your real like I mean the profit margins on lemonade on sugar water is great at this point in the story. I didn't know if we were going to have like carpets of worms destroying kids or if it would be uh, giant worms destroying kids. I was not anticipating giant worms. I also was not anticipating giant worms. But we get we get like some lovely description of the night uh where you would not hear this in an RL Stein. The 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 nightcrawler hunt begins, darkness set in, and crickets chirped like a symphony. You just <laughs> wouldn't get that in R.L. Stein. He wouldn't care enough. Like, there were a few books where, like, he bothered to, like, set up a scene or whatever. But I I think it's few and far between you get, like, some actual, like, metaphors or similes. or, or Sure. Kind of yeah. You know, and I will, I will counter your compliment at this point to be like, I, there was some nice, I guess, prose in this. There's a little yeah. bit of... There is also, I don't know, again, all of these authors of these books 
you just got to hit a certain page count or something. In a certain amount of time, too, I imagine. Yeah, there are countless amount of times in this book where the narrator, Jim, will say, I realize the Nightcrawlers were eating the fertilizer and growing bigger. Space, new line, quote, Jim, the Nightcrawlers were eating the fertilizer and getting <laughs> bigger, I said. Like, not even a variation on it, just yeah. sort of like copy and paste to the point that I just kept double taking that, like, really? Um, it really pads out this book a lot. Yeah, the, the book is padded as hell, and spoiler alert, the ending sucks. But up until, <laughs> like, the the monster reveal, I'm liking this book quite a bit. Yeah, I'm rooting for these kids more than normal Goosebump kids. Yeah, the tone is, is cool, and the, you know, I, I don't know where they're going with things yet, but I'm excited. Like, they're hitting a bunch of, like cool like nostalgic americana like child capitalism notes i think this one starts out strong but yeah it kind of starts to degrade uh in the night they're surprised by bradley who's uh bradley olsen who's britney's uh older brother and his friend kevin miller and these guys totally suck and do, and do nothing <laughs> useful for the entire book love to push their bikes through cornfields which is not how that ever works yeah i i don't know the physics of traversing a cornfield but i imagine you might chad i know that's a as well as the snipe said it's like trying to ice skate uphill Ooh. i know we make mazes out of corn not just because yeah. it's a fun pun on maze, but also because corn is <laughs> Sure, in a maze you could ride your bike around, but even then, I think I think you're going to get some pop tires. It's just a bad idea. So we meet Bradley and Kevin, and they're they're being typical older kids, scaring younger kids, mm -hmm. uh, and they go laughing back to the Olsen's house, and then boom, we hear them scream, and uh, Jim and Brittany are like, "Oh shit, we got to go save Brad and Kevin," because they screamed a, like a teenager screams. Yeah. They go find them and they're up a tree being like, oh, we saw a, we saw a giant night crawler. And it's like, uh, that can't be true. There's a lot of your your least favorite trope, Chad, of this easily verifiable thing can't be true. Yeah, yeah. And they laugh at they laugh at Bradley for his horrible cowardice. And then they say soon we wouldn't be laughing. We, we would be dead. Oh, there's so oh, there's also so many of that in this of like, I realize this would be the best day of my life. <laughs> but then I would quickly realize it would not be. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, thing A would soon become a different thing, perhaps B. <laughs> I, I really cannot stress how much we are not exaggerating. That is just exactly how it's said. It it does. I don't mean to mean to Jonathan Rand. There is, or Rand, yeah, Rand Jonathan? Is that his fucking name? I don't know. That's a, that feels backwards. Um, but it does feel like sometimes like, oh, this would be if an algorithm wrote a book. Yeah. To, to me, it feels like they're doing commercial breaks. <laughs> yeah. Because like yeah. they kind of catch you up like at the start of the next chapter. And like, I know they're writing for a young audience that is like doing a little bit of reading and then being a kid with hopes and dreams and activities. I don't think as a kid, those helped me. <laughs> if at the end of a chapter goes... Like, one of them is, we were about to have our first encounter with a giant nightcrawler. Cool. Just, like, let's get to that. Like, let's just, <laughs> don't tell me that. Just end it on a, you know, on, on, end it on Brittany going, what was that? And then, next chapter, let them encounter the nightcrawler. I don't know. With, with this book, uh, it, sort of, it also sort of has a quality of, like, dictated but not read. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of it feels kind of like an oral, like, history kind of thing where like someone's just kind of like rattling off stuff as it comes to mind like rl stein stuff is pretty stream of consciousness but like this feels kind of like someone's doing a one-man show and taking a break to drink water <laughs> and then love, coming back <laughs> i would love to see someone do this on stage this, this does kevin i had not realized this is this like if we find out at the end of the book that we've kind of pulled out of the narration and this is jim as an 80 year old man in the future <laughs> and someone mentioned night crawlers and he's yeah. like night crawlers let me tell you about night crawlers <laughs> spotlight on on stage yeah oh my god i would watch the fuck out of a one-man show doing one of these books that'd be so good all of these books transition into one another like it's a chain of kids exchanging information about yeah like paranormal stuff that is cool it does constrain how the stories are told because they're all first-hand accounts and because of that we know everyone survives at the end yeah i was thinking about that the whole time yeah or at least 
even in the Goosebumps version, they they at least pre- contained some level of intelligence if they were transformed into something to <laughs> write this story on a page. Right, right. I don't think this is, uh, from what we've seen, this is more like the monster horror genre unless the body horror genre, yeah, which yeah, I yeah. will give Goosebumps props for getting into that kind of stuff of like, I'm turning into something horrible. Like this is this seems to want to get away from that and just be like monsters are wrecking our shit. Yeah, you're right. I, I would actually be surprised if any kids in these books perished. Yeah, be, it'd be pretty neat. There are guns in this book, which we'll get to. <laughs> but okay, yeah. Uh, oh, the guns in this. Uh, yeah. So you you were sending it up. They've now heard this, the the real screams of a teenager. Yeah, uh, he comes out of the tree. They make fun of him. He goes away. Then then they find the cave, which I think is a really interesting device that is underutilized in this. Yeah. They find a giant, like, school bus sized cave in the side of a berm, whatever that is. Yeah, I was wondering. I was hoping you knew. <laughs> I I should have looked it up, but I was like, it's probably just a hill. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's probably a Nebraskan term for a hill. I'll look it up now. Hold on. A flat strip of land. So there's a big hole in the flat strip of land. Yeah, and they look in the cave and they hear something coming out of it, but it's just a dog. It's just a scared dog. The most goosebumps thing at all. I, I, I had the thought, and not to always reflect on these fake jump scares, but why is it always a dog? <laughs> like, it could be literally anything. Kids love dogs. I guess, yeah, unless you unless you particularly need your cliffhanger to be like, and I saw a mouth of fangs and eyes staring back at me. Let it be anything. They don't do that in this one. It's just like, and then a thing came out. It was a dog. Have it be like, oh, hi, it's it's the mailman. Oh, I got lost. Do you know there's a hole here? Anyway, back to delivering the mail. Like, I don't know, just vary it up. Here's here's my problem with it being a dog. There are only three houses around for miles. Whose dog is that? Someone needs to take care of that dog. Someone needs to put that dog in, in a house. Yeah, I'm assuming the dog survived this encounter. Oh yeah, the dog's a, the dog's a survivor for sure. It, also, it's a German Shepherd. Those things are tanks. Yeah, but he just been does like, oh, big old hole. Oh, I don't want to be in this hole anymore. He left. Yeah, he's gone. He's out. They go. They go back home, being like, huh, that's weird. We'll check it out later. And they don't see the giant nightcrawler. They go back home. Jim pays Brittany perhaps well for her labors. To me, it seems like (laughs) she's getting paid half the profit, roughly. uh, More than that. It's pretty good for most businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So that seems equitable and fair. Uh, And I like that we we see him do math and like that's a night. A lot of this feels like kind of like, can you throw like some math in there or like maybe a little bit of science or at least measuring? Oh yeah, yeah. If you put this, if we put enough math and science in here, we can put it on a higher shelf at the at the bookstore. <laughs> yeah, there are all these like fan responses in the beginning of this book that's like we read this in schools, <laughs> and, like going on and on about how like they you know they had so much fun reading this in school, and it's like yeah. oh that's the market is it's a goosebumps that can be read in a school. I not to. Not to judge too much, I don't think this is a very educational book. Like, no. I don't think I don't. It decides that's not. This is not how anything works. I I don't know if uh, I don't know. I guess reading it all is good for kids, but yeah, anything, literally anything. Like just let's encourage reading because like I didn't really become a reader until you know I started working on a podcast that made me read books. So here's my next problem with the book. Yes, Jim wakes up the next morning. Uh, and he says, the sun's shining, it's a beautiful day, time to set up the worms uh, for the fishermen to buy. Now, I know very little about fishing. Yes. But I do know that you you get ready before the sun has risen. Ah, you're saying you're saying Jim has missed out on most of the market. Yeah, they're already gone. Like, they're yeah. already on the lake if the sun is out and it's <laughs> a beautiful day. Jim needed to have an alarm go off at three in the morning. Yeah. He needed to pour himself a cup of coffee and put on a trucker hat and, like, go out there and set up shop in the in the dark of night. All right, now that you say all that, I realize now why they can't have the kid, like, not get a full night's sleep. No, I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> That's what he needed to do. If he wants to take this business seriously... <laughs> My my dad made me go to a steel a steel mill that started at five in the morning. Oh my god! Like, how old were you? Oh, it was high school. But like, <laughs> I remember when like this is awful. I'm going before the sun is up. Like, no one's on the road. This sucks. Did you really? Did you really work at a steel mill? <laughs> yeah, one summer, uh, my dad thought it'd be good for my career, like to have career options to work at a steel mill. It's 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 it was awful. And at one point, <laughs> uh, one of the guys working there, some nice blue collar people work in there 
at one point, one of the guys uh, found out that I was like, oh, yeah, I'm planning on going to college next year. And he, like Billy Madison, he took me by the shoulders and was like, don't work here. Get out of here. <laughs> Leave this place. I was like, okay. <laughs> it was just very much a, like, don't let this be your job. Holy shit. <laughs> so let's get to Mr. Flanagan. Let's get to the most interesting character in this whole thing. All right. Yeah. So um, uh, <laughs> they go out looking for the giant worm and Brittany walks over and, and she's like, hey, uh, Jim, what, what's up? And he's like, I'm going to go look for the giant worm. And Brittany's like, oh, cool. Let me go tell my parents. And I'm like, what good kids these are, you know? Like, <laughs> like everyone's so good. Uh, and they see a giant, they just, it's so abrupt and it's so poorly described. Like, there's so much weird about seeing a giant night crawler, I imagine. Yeah. Like, what do its anus slash mouth parts look like? I up. did want to know. I didn't want to know about its anus. I did want to know about its mouth. Like, I feel like that's the easiest and coolest science lesson you could put in this book is how clear the anatomy of a nightcrawler looks now that it's been gigantified. Because yeah. when you see a nightcrawler from, you know, normal, normal boy perspective. Yeah. It, just looks, it looks like it ain't got no holes. No, but you learn, you, you learn that it, it does. It's pretty much just a hole. That's fucking wild. Yeah. It's just a tube that stuff goes through. This is, this is like that question to press piss off people if a straw is a hole or a tube or whatever <laughs> this is like that question that pisses off people would you still love me if i was a giant worm <laughs> <laughs> i'll be honest i'm trying to google nightcrawler mouth up close it's hard to get a shot of a nightcrawler mouth yeah i feel like this would have been a, a you know a slam dunk for like you know just teaching worm anatomy to children but it was we weren't we weren't terribly interested in that. So they see a giant uh a giant crawler and they flip out uh and they run into the cornfields uh where they're pursued by the giant crawler and then they meet Mr. Flanagan. Good old Mr. Flanagan. He's a I don't know if they immediately tell you, but he is a, a former high school science teacher. Uh <laughs> huge breaking bad energy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, decided to make his living uh, being a corn farmer. Yep. And uh, we, he is not immediately aware of the giant worms, right? Um, um, he had he's armed with the water balloons. Uh, so oh, that's I think, right. He already knew about it. Yeah. So yeah. he know he he knows about them. He also like takes the time to like diss uh, Jim's dad, which I think is really funny. <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, he's like, oh yeah, I had your father when I taught science. He was awful at science. And he's like, and Jim's like, really? My dad told me he got straight A's. He's like, not in science. And I thought that was amazing. <laughs> I think there's so much pressure on kids to be exemplary, and it's it's nice to see them reminded that you can be kind of bad at things and still be a person. Yeah. <laughs> there's also a very special relationship with a teacher when it is post you being taught by them and they no longer have any authority over you where yeah. they can be very very curt and uh blunt that i i find it's my one of my favorite things i i don't know if we, i don't know we talked about this on the podcast but one of my favorite things to ever happen in when you're in high school is whenever you encounter one of your teachers in the wild like <laughs> Like when I worked at uh, Media Play, which is a retail store that's no longer around, uh, rest in peace, Media Play. Yeah, I remember working one night and going to the back and there was like that kind of magazine section. There's a little couch out there. Like if you really want to be one of those people, you can sit up there and just read magazines. You really shouldn't. But uh went back there just to clean and, uh, you know, uh, pick up all the, the Playboy mags that have been strung around. <laughs> it happened every night. And... Instead, I find my my high school geography teacher just asleep on the couch. <laughs> like he, his wife must have been there or something, but he was just fast asleep. And I thought I found a dead body for a moment. It Holy was, shit! Yeah, uh, still burned in my brain. Overwhelming prank potential there. I know. I respected him enough to let. Like, I'm just gonna let him sleep. If you, if only you were a worse child, could have put a little Maxim magazine over his eyes so he could fall asleep. <laughs> <get some> shade. <laughs> got him so so mr flanagan mr flanagan is is a fine character he doesn't really they never really explore his full um mad scientist potential i feel no no he should be like signed up by the government to make super weapons based on yeah he has created two new inventions one a fertilizer that can turn presumably anything big 
but he meant it to make the corn big. Yeah, I, I think it, right now it's presumably anything it can turn big, but we learn later that it's just Nightcrawlers. Yeah, I don't know why he targeted just Nightcrawlers. It's accidental. He didn't experiment on them or anything. Just Who knows how science works? Science doesn't have any rules. Yeah, this would be a good place to put in like a worm term like a <laughs> oh it's it's theranix it it must have had a reaction to that and then you could have a diagram of a worm and then like put that in science class not enough worm terms not enough worm terms yeah we learn about the we learn about the uh super fertilizer and uh we learn that there are giant uh night crawlers crawling around during the day all this takes place during the day which is also a huge misstep yeah they mentioned at one point like a curiosity that they are out during the day huh it's not even like a clue for later or anything, right? It's just a uh, just during the day. Didn't didn't have to be that way. You're in control of the story, but you know. <laughs> in fact, actually, most of the night in this book is just kind of quiet times of thinking about business. Yep. Um, <laughs> and uh, I love how uh, I love how Mr. Flanagan says, uh, or the kids say to Mr. Flanagan, "Have you called the cops or anything?" And they're like, "Ah, oh, the cops thought I was lying." And I was like, "Yeah, man, cops won't help you." Yeah. Oh, the cops. Oh, I love the way the cops are portrayed in this. Um, <laughs> and Mr. Flanagan is also a genius, has already developed a special anti-grow yes. shrink serum Yep. made of what I believe is, quote, powder and water. Yep. Just powder and water and very specific measurements of powder. Plus water in a water. Oh balloon. yeah, up to up to thir- at one point they make it with him, and it yeah. says up to thirty three different powders with names I couldn't pronounce. Just put like a couple in there for me. Just give me a couple. Yeah, it's reverse cocaine. It's it's cocaine <laughs> that makes makes you really like small and tired. <laughs> That's the other crop that Flanagan was growing that he didn't want them to know about. <laughs> yeah, he's growing reverse cocaine. Uh, Flanagan is already equipped with, I believe, a squirt a squirt gun. At this point? Water balloons. We don't get the squirt gun until later. I don't know why I thought, yeah, I thought he came out ripped, ripped like Rambo with a squirt gun. Yeah, he has, he has water balloons. (laughs) I think it's funny for some reason that this lonely adult farmer just has a massive surplus of water balloons in his house. Well, this was, this was the cool part about like the Fear Street movies too, was when like super soakers and water balloons and shit became like, you know, uh, holy weapons and shit like that. I love it when kid weapons become powerful weapons. Oh, totally. Uh, Lost Boys. And yeah, I feel like half the Troll Hunters episodes I worked on were just like, can we have the kids make stuff out of their yeah. their, their their toys? Zombies Ate My Neighbors, that sort of thing. Oh, man, what a good game. Yeah, man. But yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like, Mr. Flaggett's like, uh, come with me if you want to live. Uh, yep. Take a water balloon. And let's get to making water balloons. Yeah, but then they see Brad and Kevin riding up towards them. And they're like, what are Brad and Kevin doing? They're going really fast. And then uh, in what's described as a tornado of horror, uh, (laughs) a hole opens up beneath Brad and Kevin as they're frantically riding away. And two giant night crawlers spring out of them and start really like menacing the the teenagers. Brad draws aggro by throwing rocks at (laughs) one and like they're trading aggro and dodging as best they can. But uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, but luckily, Brittany plays softball and has the perfect arm. She has the oh yeah, she has the throw that never misses. She is known as the god of softball in some circles. <laughs> <laughs> and this is her calling to exterminate or shrink uh, giant nightcrawlers. Yeah, and she just blam blam. She's she's the muscle in this uh, in this friendship. Like Jim gets a few hits in later on. I think I think he might get the other one, but like. Brittany's like from like downtown, just like lobbing these things. Oh, there there are multiple times in this book where like like a SWAT team calling out their shots. They <laughs> yeah. will like 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 you're playing XCOM. They will have every person go. All right, I'm gonna hit that one on the right. I thought you that, that was one really cool too. Yeah, because like the, the the balloons are such a limited resource, they have to like call their shots. And when there's like suddenly an army of uh, night crawlers, spoiler alert, like they they do have to be like, OK, well, we can't we got to we got to figure this out. We got to do volleys correctly. I, yeah, actually, a major part of this book is just sort of uh, resource management, like a survival horror game. I, I found this annoying when I read it in the book. But to talk about it with you, Kevin, actually, I liked it more. Just this. <laughs> we got four water balloons left. Can we get across the driveway in time to get more water balloons? Got the water balloons. 
let's put them in a wheelbarrow and get them onto the into the house and put them on the couch. Oh, but wait, what if we put it on the hose? Okay, let's take three of those balloons and use them to escort us back to the hose. Like, there's just a lot of I don't think educational. Yeah, but almost almost like logic problem of like how many can we take? Oh no, this feels like this definitely feels like a decade shift away from uh like goosebumps because like this is drawing on zombie movies and like yeah you know, like uh dawn of the dead and stuff like that where there are those like resource moments like uh, oh we found a cache of weapons or whatever like stuff that's like really really common in zombie storytelling today but like rl's pulling more from like twilight zone and like yeah 1950s movies of like communism is scary like <laughs> he's he's not so much pulling from like you know gen xer like beloved gory horror movies well yeah and also the threat of this of these giant night crawlers are interesting they've they established that like oh you know these things could just flatten us like pancakes instantly yeah or maybe they would eat us it's it's never really clear if the night crawlers are malicious it seems like they're just worms yeah they're kind of aggressive but they're also really stupid and they don't really do much like they'll go towards stimulus and uh, uh flanagan says like one of the things that the serum does is it makes them more aggressive uh like they're more sure. likely to charge towards something than run away from it so that's interesting they the night crawlers also <laughs> eat a lot of other shit I, I think they're trying to cover up for the fact that a giant worm would still just kind of behave like a worm and not bother much. Of yeah. It. At what point the worms eats like a statue. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think a worm could digest that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Could a mega worm do it? I guess. I don't Perhaps. know. Like if it was like a tiny rock, would a worm eat a tiny cement rock? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know about worms. I wish this book taught me a little bit about I worms. I wish this, uh, I w yeah, I wish Dr. Mr. Flanagan was like, oh no, it's processing the ceramic statue in its three stomachs. I, I just think this is lacking worm terms in general, you know? <laughs> it really is. It needs more worm terms. Uh, like, it's, it's kind of fucked up when you do, and this is why RL stuck with, um, you know the the supernatural and not the semi plausible. Like it's it's fucked up when there is information. Like you could talk to a worm expert and get some good stuff, but they don't because that would take up time, and they're on a very tight deadline to make this book. So like, Arl's not going to talk to a werewolf expert, and he shouldn't. He should make up something cool about werewolves. But like, nightcrawlers are real, and like you could potentially talk to somebody whose whole life is about nightcrawlers, and they might have something interesting to tell you. Yeah, I you know you know another missed opportunity uh i feel like what are the what are the few things you know about worms they come up uh when it's wet right oh, when yeah, it rains yeah. uh and then also i think these are night crawlers or maybe they're earthworms you can cut them in half you shouldn't that's barbaric and cruel right you can cut them in half and they keep living or i think become two new worms yeah like, yeah, yeah like that feels like for a horror movie a horror book of like these things becoming bigger you could have had it like yeah, and then we we ran the thresher through the big one. And, <laughs> hooray, we stopped it. Oh no, now there's two worms and they're really pissed. You yeah, know, just... like if this had a Netflix adaptation where it could be gorier and like more adult or something like that, I think that would be the first thing they add. And I I would bet it was probably in the original design like doc for this that they're like, we want them to cut the worms in half. But there's very explicit language in this part we're at right now where like they throw rocks at the worms, but the rocks don't hurt the worms. And the, the serum balloons like don't hurt the worms either. They just shrink them back down into regular size worms. They shrink so fast. Yep. It's not even like, oh, give them a little time. They'll shrink down. They are, before my eyes, tiny. So <laughs> Brad and Kevin are saved uh, because their worms are shrunk down real small. Uh, yep. And they uh, ride home like cowards. And, uh, Jim, and <laughs> Jim and Britt go and help Flanagan. Uh, we learn Flanagan's phone is dead, so we can't call for help. Even though The no worms have cut us. the lines, yeah. he says. They have adapted. <laughs> <laughs> they make uh, they make some more serum balloons and put them in a bucket, and then <laughs> Rad and Kev are under a assault again. Uh, and oh no, this is the rock there. But whatever, I mixed up some. Yeah, there, there's a there's a really a lot of back and forth in this middle part of the book. Again, not calling it padding, but there's a lot of <laughs> Brad and Kevin come back. No one believed us. Okay, yeah, let's run to the house. Uh, quick, can you run over there? Or run over? Like it, it is 
very much um it kind of just blurs together yeah it's hard to keep track of where everyone is at all times because the main group kind of splinters off brad and kevin are hard to keep in one place for any amount of time well, they got those bikes they got a red <laughs> so yeah they uh they save brad and kevin uh kevin just leaves kevin bikes into town they like watch him for a really long time as he bikes, <laughs> as he bikes away like a coward in a good movie, they would have watched, it was like a long shot of watching him go down the street, and then the very, like, last moment was like, I think he's going to make it, and Earthworm just comes out of the ground <laughs> and just, like, eats him. <laughs> That'd be incredible. Oh, yeah, no one dies from the Earthworms, which is kind of lame, but... Not whatever. a single person is eaten by a worm, and then we get a fun inside the worm shot. I was in the worm. <laughs> I was in the worm, I saw all of its stomachs. <laughs> Did you know that the dirt of the, is processed at the bottom of their butts? That'd be a great worm term, a good worm fact for us all. I know. By the way, at one point, Fla- uh, I keep on Flanagan. Yeah, Flanagan corrects. They're not worms. They're nightcrawlers. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to call but them like, worms. But I'm like, they're worms, dude. Yeah. A nightcrawler is a type of worm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We all agree. Spiders are bugs. If it's not scientifically <laughs> true, it's emotionally <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh-huh. My, like, th- another weird thing that I guess they have to do because it's a children's book, but there aren't any freaks going out trying to get eaten, trying to get vored by a worm. <laughs> <laughs> there would have been just at least in that. Yeah. At least someone in town is like, Oh, this is what I've always wanted. We know scientifically that 3% of the population would jump into a worm to get vored. Yeah. If you could put me, <laughs> I'm trying to think like, I, I don't want to get bored. I'm not into vore, but I'm just wondering if like, if you could put me in the equivalent of like a shark cage. Yeah. Right. Like, like, or, you know, that those giant balls that American gladiators rolled around in and that one, that one, uh, contest. Yeah. With like an oxygen tube and like, I'm hermetically sealed in there. So I'm not going to get any gross goo mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just some lights. I'd be like, I'll go in, I'll go through there. Let me see what it's like. Yeah. That's an educational journey. That's a, yeah. that's a magic school bus. <laughs> That's a school bus. Eat vored by a worm. Get vored by a big old worm. Look at that worm's insides from the insides. <laughs> uh, can we get to the part where the kids get to Flanagan's special container of magic science potion? Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, Kevin leaves. Uh, no one believes us. There are four more crawlers. Uh, Bradley misses a whole bunch. Uh, Bradley just can't hit anything for shit w- with his water balloons. He's the worst at throwing shit. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be an arc. Like, I thought Bradley's cowardice and the terrible throwing ability would be brought back as, like, a Bradley gets his one heroic moment. Yeah. It doesn't. No, he's 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 really just the, the butt monkey of the book. Yeah, he just sucks and is bad, and that's it. Uh, which is fine. You can have characters who just suck and are bad, and if it's an older brother, then yay. Yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> But uh, then then uh, Trooper Fraser uh, shows up. They finally get the attention of a cop and they try to prove to the cop that giant nightcrawlers are around. And he says, I don't see any of them. They're like, we well, we don't have any proof, but here's like, my car that was crushed. He's like, that car could have been crushed by anything. You guys are stupid. I hate you. Yeah. Also, I'm not going to wonder where the thing that crushed it was. I'm not curious. I have people to help. You're you're wasting you're wasting everyone's time and you're killing people. <laughs> talking to me right now. Uh, says says the cop and then in fact you're all going to jail he says yeah you're all going to jail he gets in his car to bring the jail to them to put them in the jail and then bring the jail back to where the jail is uh but as soon as he gets in his car a big worm hits him and he's like oh my god uh the worms are real <laughs> that, that, <laughs> then he's on the team he's on the team i this is the most unbelievable part of this is after the cop is on the team they process that he has a gun like he yeah. holsters his gun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and Jim is like, "Oh my god, could you use the gun on the worm?" And he's like, "Probably wouldn't work." Puts <laughs> his gun away. You telling me not to get too political? You tell me a cop is going to not only not jump at the chance to use his gun, not jump at the chance to just unload his gun into a like emotionless giant worm? That's like. That's got to be the best time to ever use a gun. I mean, the gun won't do anything because it's meant to kill people, people sized people or smaller. But it's not, they're not bulletproof. You could still probably like give them an infection or something. Yeah. I mean, I don't, well, I don't think there would be anything that could infect the worm because like, I don't know if anything could survive in its system. Like it would, it would take like a microbe a long time to get used to the new biology of the worm. So I think. 
I don't know. I don't think you could infect the worm. Maybe you could infect the worm. I mean, those troopers in Starship Troopers were really just firing wildly bullets into the bugs. It seemed like yeah, but they, they got the job done eventually. They had assault rifles, Chad. This is a this is just a Glock. Okay, sure. I'm just I just it's a real again kids book. Just a real waste to have a cop going like Troop, Trooper Frazier. His name is to to not not fire a gun at a worm. It is a little bit of a waste. And what's also a waste is they try to make more uh, balloons and they uh, put them all in a wheelbarrow and the wheelbarrow falls over and all the balloons go everywhere. Oh, that's so frustrating. Bit really <laughs> frustrating. Kind of a big waste of time. Uh, as far as so much of the page making <laughs> balloons. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of like it though. It's a nice kind of setback, I guess. it's a, it, There's nothing that's really scary about this book. But like the fact that suddenly they're less they're less safe than they once were feels like a like it's horror adjacent. Yeah, the only part that really really hits is as a moment later they have the great idea to well let's let's hook up a hose. Yeah, and and create a uh, they get this is the most science they get. We could work up like a bike pump and yep. create pressure on the hose <laughs> to be able to shoot it far enough to hit all the earthworms. Like you're kind of wasting a lot of water by doing that. Yeah, but they're surrounded by like 50 giant night crawlers and they put together essentially a giant super soaker uh, yeah. with, the, with the bike pump. And that's cool because uh, uh, Mr. Flanagan uses it like a chain gun in Doom to just mow down <laughs> yeah. night yeah, crawlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this... This book is great. You know, there have been a few missteps so far, but this is kind of like the last high point of the book. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. And this is about, what, halfway through it? Well, two thirds. Yeah. And it's, you know, the first escalate. It's the first, like, weapon escalation, which is cool. Um, but yeah, like you said, the, the super soaker, the super, super soaker, the mega soaker, if you will. Yeah. Is, is very wasteful and they're already out of serum. Uh, so they have to go back to water balloons to survive. Uh, to get the rest of like the 16 worms out of the 50 they didn't get <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh and jim almost dies but the turnaround is way too quick because uh yeah. britney is right there with like the shot out of nowhere which she does a lot <laughs> like britney is just unstoppable britney is the hero of this book yeah in a in a horror book you gotta like like she would die if this was a zombie story like she's the most capable character so like oh sure sure you got to take her out of the equation for like them to you know have their lowest point but also yeah in terms of even stakes like it's kind of anticlimactic that they just will we'll just we'll just make some more potion let's go make some more po like it it really should be like when they run out of water in the tank they don't have time to make more it's going to take but it's <laughs> instead i don't know it's like a it's it's like too easy for them yeah. right the 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 next thing that happens is i don't remember how they show up but the fire department shows up okay yeah they learned that their parents went to town that takes a whole chunk of the book that we can just skip over they learn their parents went to town and bradley just goes home at this point he's just like i'm done i'm going home <laughs> go lay in my bed and close the close the blinds flanagan's like let's go to my basement lab let's whip up some more potion um and they hear a fire truck coming for them um oh because uh trooper dumbass whatever his name is um the the cop goes to jim's house and calls the fire department right uh he also learns oh shit uh denton is under attack so the, the fire truck comes to Flanagan's house and they make more serum. They put the serum in the fire truck's uh, internal water supply of 500 gallons. And so, yeah. and then the fire truck leaves. So we don't even get to see that, which is. I know, right? You're like, this at least should be the escalation of like, and the kids get to sit in the back of the truck and they get to fire the hose. Yeah. Like, you don't even let the kids ride in the fire truck until the next truck shows up, which is an, un an unnecessary complication. <laughs> um and when the next truck shows up a worm hits it obviously and a fireman twists his fragile fireman ankle oh my god he twists his ankle it was like it was just such a it was such a not interesting injury and i'm like okay now we get to go in the fire truck and we go in the fire truck when we ride around denton for like 10 minutes and nothing happens it's all very like, and then we then we fire hosed all of the worms in Denton, but we didn't see our parents. Okay, was that was that exciting at least? Yeah, shouldn't this be like the big escalation part? Like we've gone from like water balloons to super soaker to fire truck. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Like one of the nightcrawlers like bursts out of the road, and now the fire truck is like 
is starting to fall down into a massive tunnel below and they got to like hit the reverse on the on the truck to like back it out in time or they're going to fall into a pit. I don't know, just spitballing some... Or or they meet a Nightcrawler King, which is a bunch of Nightcrawlers oh, that have fused together. Like a ra- oh my god, like a Rat King, but yeah, they're all just tangled. That'd be so cool, Kevin. Yeah, it's like Katamariing around the entire city, <laughs> and they got and it's chasing them, and they got to turn the fire around. It looks like one of those Koosh balls you get, <laughs> yeah. and it's just, it's just Nightcrawler. Uh, but none of that happens. It's just like a really like like glanced over part where like they go to town, they don't find their parents. And they go home and uh, they get a call. And it's their parents. And uh, they get they want to go pick up their parents, but the truck is destroyed. So they walk to it and they encounter one last night crawler and they throw water balloons at it, but they don't work. And they're like, oh, shit, they don't work. But Jim realizes because Jim's the main character. Jim realizes it's because that the serum needs five minutes in order to fully work uh, <laughs> because the scientists had said that before. So yeah. they just kind of outrun it for five minutes and then they hit it again and it dies and that's the climax <laughs> yeah yeah what it's the not, fuck it, it it's it's strange to have that be the final encounter the one the one last night crawler this is called night crawlers of nebraska and it all takes place in the daylight and the majority of it takes place above ground like yeah yeah i i i, I think it's a big misstep to not have them like we got to go in the tunnels and like get rid of the night crawler nest or yeah, something like they're, that. They're barely in the, I think they're in the tunnels for two pages. Yeah. They're in the tunnels and there's not even a worm. They just worry about what would happen if a worm came. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then we found a hole. We got out. That'd be a great place to like separate the group or something like that. Like take Take Brittany out of the equation and have Jim have to like survive on his own or like. Oh, give... yeah. Or like Brittany breaks her arm so she can't throw anymore. Yeah. I don't know. Or like and like Bradley shows up to redeem himself or something because he didn't. He did like as far as like asshole, like 14 year old shit. He just kind of lightly scared uh, a couple of kids and then. Yeah. Was kind of cool and left. They're not. Yeah, they're not. They don't seem they're They're kind of dealing with all of this pretty rationally through the book. Yeah, and, like, things clean themselves up really fast. No one's mad at Flanagan. Uh, they, <laughs> there, was, there was one line, he's like, it's all my fault. And the cop goes like, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't beat yourself up. It's fine. A news crew shows up at Jim's house and they give an interview. And then, like, Jim and Brittany's parents all have a cookout together. Like, you can't sing fucking Yub Nub if you haven't destroyed a fucking Death Star, <laughs> all right? Like, ah, oh, it just it made me so mad. I'm like, wait, that's it? Wait, that's you it? Haven't earned, you haven't earned your yum dub they yet. They did not earn hot dogs and hamburgers. I'm sorry. You have to destroy <laughs> a Death Star first. Uh. <laughs> I mean, also, they kind of just don't worry about other Nightcrawlers they didn't hit, right? Yeah, they're kind of like, yeah, that's probably all of them. And, like, you know, you could do, like, a cloud seeding thing. Like, you know how nightcrawlers come out in the rain? Like, maybe, like, the solution is to, like, Ooh, get the serum into the into the like, rainwater really cool, or something Kevin. like that. I like that. We all have to drink the serum. Yeah. Or, yeah, someone drinks the serum and, vor- and gets vored by a nightcrawler in order to stop it. Oh, that'd be so cool. I don't know. I, I know I know you came in pretty hot on this book, and, and I was feeling good about it, but kind of... It, it, for some reason, it was just really not excited about what they were doing in this story. <laughs> I, I think I could see the potential in, in this book and the setup a little bit more. It's cool to have a zombie story done in this style for kids. I don't really like the the generic zombie story template. I, I kind of grew tired of it pretty fast. Sure, but yeah. I think this is an interesting version of it that has potential, but not within the deadline that this book had. No, I mean, this could be, you say, you say zombie. I think it's a fair comparison. I, I would reference the one that works that I think I saw as a kid tremors, right? Like yeah. just graboids are actually, even if they look silly as hell are kind of scary. And like the threat of them always being below you. And I don't know, like them bursting into basements. Cause you realize you think you're safe in the basement, but you're not, you're just kind of in a, death trap for for worms like that mm. stuff's really cool and this book didn't really capitalize on any of that yeah i think if i was a kid i was lame as shit so i'd probably like this a lot better than goosebumps uh just because i don't know 
the the happy ending probably would have hit me a little bit more but now i kind of appreciate rl's like you know his endings are bad but sometimes there are com- consequences like sometimes things don't end happy uh yeah uh, or they end on like a cruel joke or something like that and that has a little bit more of an interesting vibe than hamburgers and hot dogs oh and we tuned the <laughs> serum so now that now that nightcrawlers just grow twice as big so Jim's already successful business can now up the price to a dollar fifty per dozen. <laughs> also, I mean, let's not even talk about how they they almost solved the food crisis problem for the world, but it seems like it was just made to make nightcrawlers a little bit bigger. I mean, you could solve the food crisis world if people just ate night giant nightcrawlers. Oh steaks. my god, that's the key. Dude, well, listen, let's be honest. In a couple of years, <laughs> we're all going to be Dave Bautista and Blade Runner twenty forty nine. We're all going to be just eating grubs. So let's get let's get into it. Eating gawk. Ugh, ugh I'm, I'm gonna hate it. I hate it so much already. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't like eating uh, sea bugs, which everyone seems to enjoy in my home state. Are you calling? Are you calling? Are you calling lobsters and crabs sea bugs? Yeah, yeah. I don't like. I, I'm I'm not about that life, but I might eat a land bug one of these days. I don't know. I could if they were the bugs. If the bugs were like the ones from Lion King <laughs> that they ate, I could maybe get into that. You, you deep fry anything and give me some, give me like a tonkatsu sauce or something. I'll, I'll try. Oh <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to. You have to just bread them. Yep, bread them, fry them, give them a good sauce. I hope we have bread in the future. Oh man, that'd be amazing, but don't count on it. <laughs> uh, and the book kind of ends with a tie-in for the next one that takes place in Arizona, but I'm not kind of, I'm not really about that life, honestly. <laughs> I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Did you read it? I didn't. I was like, no, oh, no. I accidentally. I actually scrolled ahead a couple pages and I was like, wait, what's going on? There's robots now? And I was like, oh, this has got interesting. Oh, it's the teaser for the next chapter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I like the device of this is passed from kid to kid through like the kid, like underground social media network or whatever. But it's, you know, it's, it's whatever. It, it, it is. No, I'm with it you. Is. Uh, overall, uh, you know, uh, a fun read, some missed opportunities. Yeah. Kevin, I enjoyed I enjoyed covering it with you. Oh, I enjoyed covering it with you too. I'd I'd say like this is kind of a, a sideways thumb for both of us. <laughs> yeah. A, a smooth. But like if you've been reading like along with us, which I hope none of you are, <laughs> but if you have been reading <laughs> along with us, uh this one's a good shake up, I think, a little bit. I am still intrigued by Michigan the Michigan Chillers and the the uh American Chillers series. Like this doesn't turn me off from the whole production. Like I super want to read the ones for like our states. Yeah, like, there's like Iron Bugs of Indiana or something like. Talking about like nano machines. Is yeah, that what you're talking about. Yeah, or um, or the X Files episode with the with the cockroaches, where the copperphages, where they're like they're, they're metal bugs from space. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that one yet. Oh man, that's that like one of my favorite episodes. That's not the one the cabin with the cabin bugs. No, that's the one where there's like a romance like plot underneath war of the copper phages it's a it's a silly one like it's a good silly x files cool all right i'll check that one out yeah if you want to if you want a good bug story war of the copper phages uh basically like all my favorite x files are the silly ones and they're written by the same guy who didn't really (laughs) go on i think he did the x files spinoff that was like the the, oh the lone gunman lone gunman yeah oh sick I, i don't know what else he did but yeah that's uh that's nebraska nightcrawlers Nebraska Nightcrawlers. Uh, yeah, I think listen, we'll see what we do next. As we talked about in the last episode, uh, we are we are preparing to dive into the new series of Goosebumps. We're going to tackle some Fear Street. We're going to tackle some Horrorland. Uh, and Paul will be back to join us for those as well. Hope you enjoyed this detour into Nebraska. Kevin, do you have any news on Kevin in Kevin's world that we should share? Uh, uh, if you want to play some games, feel free to check out supertry.itch.io if you want to play some fun free video games give give kevinmoney.com yeah oh also maybe check out heart cannon uh i've been uh yeah. uploading episodes of my uh podcast that i made in uh, 2020 and 2021 heart cannon uh that's being made public for the first time uh you can you can check that out by uh going to i think heartcannon.libsyn.com uh cannon spelt c a n o n yeah, hardcanon.libsyn.com or just type hard cannon podcast into your search bar. You'll probably find it somewhere. But yeah, we're about halfway through. Uh there's six episodes up at the at the time I'm saying this into a microphone. 
and I'm putting out an episode from the 12 episode run every week. And I'd like to start the podcast up again. And if you want to support uh, that happening, maybe check out uh, givekevinmoney.com because the whole podcast started as a thing I wanted to do for my patrons. So if I get if I get some more support on Patreon, I'll have more time that I can spend making random cool stuff with my friends. So maybe check everyone, out. Should, everyone should check it out. Uh, Paul's episodes up there. Mine's coming down the pipe at some point. Yeah, yeah. You're the first episode of season two. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, also, yeah, I'll say also, uh, I, I was on a, a friend's podcast. Friend of the show, Kyle McVeigh, has a new one called uh, Yesterday's Tomorrow Today uh, with co-host Joey Ryanish. They are covering – it's a fun premise. It's uh, talking about fictional futures from movies in the past. So, for example, you know, uh, RoboCop's version of the future – uh, Demolition Man's version of the future. Oh. Uh, I I was on to discuss the Purge, which was covering a idea of the near future that is now the past because that movie's been out so long enough. And oh wow, you're right. It's 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 kind of weird to think about that. Um, but thinking about like you know, it's it's really a great premise to talk about like how would these worlds work? <laughs> what would be the nuance of it? Uh, I think the Purge. I've only seen the first one, but I think it is both a surprisingly brilliant movie concept and also incredibly dumb and if you think about it for more than 10 seconds it it starts to fall apart but it's fun to riff on and uh imagine what you would actually do in the purge besides just murdering people yeah i'm excited to Um, see what your take on that is because i feel like it's it's like we've uh well you've obviously explored the the depths of purge uh philosophy on goosebuds so we should uh we should maybe maybe uh, inject a little more purge talk yeah you know it, it's it's been an, it's been a long time since we talked about the calling on goosebumps <laughs> but maybe it's time to get back into it um I, i'll tell you my one just an example of the many problems of the purge how do fucking time zones work all right like what are oh, we doing because it starts oh i see it starts at a certain hour and like are you telling me that if i murder someone like two minutes after the purge ends you guys are going to arrest me like, it's just one of those hard, concrete rules that just seems like it's going to be really, really exploited and not taken away. Well, I've, um, I've long been a proponent of we should abolish time zones. I also, Kevin, one universal time for everyone. And yeah. if and if midnight for you just happens to be seven, you call it 0700? Yeah. Sorry. You just got to learn to live with it. Yeah. Like, that's just what it is. I think that's fine. I, I don't think that I will agree, require Kevin. too much of a shift. We'll stop saying nine to five, but whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. So check that out. It's yesterday's tomorrow today. So, uh, they just launched as a podcast. You can find it on most services, including YouTube. Uh, check that out. Give us some love and let them know that Goosebud sent you. Uh, if also, if you want to support this show and get access to our camp Goosebuds, which are our monthly bonus episodes, Get to weigh on what we're reading next. Join our exclusive Discord with a very really amazing community of Goose Buddies. You can go to patreon.com slash goosebuds. Pledge your support to the show. It keeps the lights on and allows us to make this make this project for you all. Yeah, please go there. Uh all right. I think that's a bit of goosebuds. I'm gonna go load up Baldur's Gate and think about my character's genitals. I'm gonna go load up the in browser Baldur's Gate character creator and make a few characters that I'll never play. <laughs> That's very real. <laughs> Till next time. Bye. Bye, everybody. This beautiful show is brought to you by our Patreon supporters, of which you can become one and join. The Book of Names. The Book of Names. Book Names. Book of Names. First, we have the highest name and the highest honor in the Book of Names, Stefan Jive Turkey Kuwabara. Hollis Hornbeak. Hey, low belly, hate me. Cameron Murphy Audio. Michael McDowell. Hey, Josh Robb. Mickey C. Nathan Dolezal. Mike Lanteri. Buddy Morrill. Alecade. Mel Dipson. Afshin. Dango twist. Zentacles pours their cup onto <gasps> the ice church floor. Yes. What's in that cup? Is it cold? It should build up ice, I say. It was a cup of lava, you fools. <laughs> Straight to the core. <laughs> Please let us know which way your cup pours, book namers. What temperature? How, yeah, how it burns. Yeah, is it lava? Is it ice lava? Tell us. Nesquik.
Stealth Bates, which way does your cup turn? Robert Moon! <laughs> it's not really about the, t- the direction of the cup turning, it's about the temperature of the if cup. If it turns upwards, there ain't nothing pouring out of it. Well, that's true. That's very true. Jason Crooker. <laughs> Clay Castle. <laughs> Miguel Pardo, turn your cup. John Keeney. Calf, turn thy cup. Justice so, for Paranoia Shop content. You do not get points. a cup. <laughs> It's okay. The podcast exists online somewhere. You can go listen to it. It's always there. It's always there. The Juggalobalist. Gregory D. Warren. Alan Saylor. Cody Redfield. Bradford Coulter. Aiden pledges their hammer to Dwarf Daddy Kevin. Thank (laughs) you, Dwarven Child. (laughs) Jar Jar Slinks thinks uh, this podcast is great, sir. (laughs) Chosen one. (laughs) Pledges his cadre of musketeers to house Kevin. No, thank you, chosen one. Thank you, musketeer children. Levi fan. Up and champ. I heard a cat. Jonas Engman. Wasn't my cat. Wasn't wall cat. <laughs> it's my cat who's yelling at me for some reason. She's trying to say Carl. Anthony Mulberry. <laughs> the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Elusive Koala. Yanni Markovina. Brooke X. Bezos Christo, a.k.a. Bezos Christ. <laughs> Christian Van Skeever. Christ in both of those. Mm, Drew Applegate. Oh. Uh, the apple is also big in the Bible. <laughs> There's a lot of Christ in this podcast. Jeremy Lowe. Brian Hobgood. Zach Connor uh, wrote a secret Bible that nobody talks about. <laughs> Patreon underscore donator comma yo yeah improv <laughs> Joe Spooky Digital Ghost Tierney Tom Widom Andrew Jadzak wonders if it is Michael and Terry Michael and Terry or Michael and Terry <laughs> That's easier to read than to say I think I did a good job Yeah Yeah no you did great No yeah Don't tell me with your names if you understood that last name It's easier to read than to hear Mm-hmm. Lord Cornwallis. Carson Birkenbean. Murphep. Alicia Grave. Sean Minogue. Rushy Glenn. Wiggle it! Luke LaFountain. Do not turn that fountain on in Ice Church. Chip Hansen. Matt McClellan. Tanya Turtle. Juan Jalapeno. Jonas Blotterman. Keith Halcrow. Timothy Misa Dulakis. Clay McCarty. Parker Lee. Ham underscore boat. Raymond Hernandez. The Crow fans, but seasonal. Ah, Matthew Sutton. Paul Grasso. Jeffrey Owen Cawhee. Joe, regular name Scott. Alex Moon, the robotic dog. Kelsey Kinnaman. Russell Kastberg. Javier Jimenez. Chris Putrakis, one of my favorite names to say because it's <laughs> different than a name I normally say. Scotty Pippen, uh, the name that's the same as another good name. <laughs> Dungeon Kappa. Luke Noodles. <gasps> Ice Acolyte Hamster. Yeah. Oh, boo. Boo, I love you, a boo. Wait, why are you booing? They love the ice. We don't know which way the, they they acolyte the ice. They're just a small hamster. I feel like if you're an acolyte for ice, you're pro-ice. I just think you like, I just think you keep an eye on the ice. I think we're starting hot church. (laughs) What the fuck? Don't you fucking split from ice church. (laughs) I think schism time. Oh my God. A bunch of Martin Luther's in here. (laughs) Zach Weir. Limp duck. Gonna nail a piece of American cheese on the door of the ice church. (laughs) Hugh Boland. American cheese? (laughs) This is funny. A piece of American (laughs) cheese nailed it to a church. Like that's your like it's like a yeah no no yeah it's your ninety five theses or whatever. It's more of a uh, visual yeah. joke. No, that's no, good. I like it. Um, Sam Bambino, Tobias Clark, Meet Virginia, Nathan Remick, Need more kimchi? Estamina, Lord of Paul's Pants, Chris Hard Penis and Sleep Clothes, Nelson. Oh, <laughs> so glad we got another dip of hard penis. Me too. <laughs> Me too, man. Another month of hard penis. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Thank, thank Christ. Techie Tammy. Leewood. Streak. Joey Evans. Kieran McNamara. Diet Soda. Carewise Gamgee. Jackie Ledoux. Coleman Laguza. Lamb, the aspiring demon of Lord of Friendship. Wow. wow. Lamb came out with a new title. Lamb upgrade. A wild swaggy Yolo Squire appears. Throw ball at it. Cameron Hansen. A pair of Scots. Levi Kidder. David Gray. Generally depressing. The Deadly Bulb. 
Bryce Diary, Matthew Bratado, Ben Bohan, Carbson. I am Cornholio, and I need teepee for my bunghole. Thank you for uh, informing us of your needs, Cornholio. <laughs> Hello, this is Real Paul. I'm trapped in a mirror world. Hell. That was a lot. Mm. <laughs> you said it, Real Paul. <laughs> Bodie. <laughs> Anthony needs to know if Ice Church supports trans rights or if it's a lame, if it's lame like regular church. I think you know the answer to this. Obviously, trans rights for Ice Church. Yay, trans rights. trans rights, yay. But also, I'm worried about the demon coming out of the ice and hurting trans that people. That demon so is going to be so pro-trans rights, it's going to turn all other churches pro-trans rights. Okay, all right, Open fine. the ice. Yeah. Hashtag open the ice. So Hashtag it's funny because rights. Martin Luther nailed a, a piece of paper <laughs> onto the church, and in my head, it's even funnier if it was just a piece of American cheese. <laughs> Which is the same shape as a piece of paper. <laughs> same color. I need that whole big piece of cheese. Oh, that's such a big piece of cheese. So right yeah. 95. Can you imagine eight and a half by 11 American cheese? <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine a blanket of American cheese? You should do 95 slices of it so Chad can make 95 peanut butter and cheese oh. sandwiches. <laughs> Oh, Jonas and a Voldson. Some of Chad's bird friends. We pledge our talons and sharpen beaks to Chad. Caca. <laughs> Joe Gorman. Also caca. Burgers. Blissful. Anti-spiral. Manifesting. Your drill is the drill that'll pierce the heavens. Calamity Carl. Germ Juice. Eric Horwitz. Tiffany Lee. Nick Johnson. Thomas Jancis. Lucretia McEvil. Mutant Astronaut. Henry Torbert. Boner Guard Epsilon Hamilton, a.k.a. Hambone, host of Radio Bonaire. <laughs> oh, now, see, now we have lore. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Adam Knapp. Ryan Carroll. Jeremy Bowser. Megan McCormick Mason. Logan Derby. Brad Schmelzer. Kick. Ninja Breadman. Plush. Hello to Kiss Frenchland. Aaron Lord. Callum, Mr. Misfire West. Mandy Nasty. Skulletorin. Dr. Chocula pledges every claw and fang under his command to Paul. To the ice, brethren. Crow! Yaplin. Philip Reynolds. Robot Arena. Nate Bitchy. Mr. Unimportant pledges this cool Rocky found to whoever last trimmed their beard. It was Chad. Last week. Because <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> I get a cool rock. Chad, you deserve it. Well, oh, thank you. Good for you, Chad. Oh, I'll have a fine supper tonight. <laughs> Ryan R. Davis. <laughs> Scott Wabel. SSJ Trogdor. Rocco. Josh Howell no longer pledges his zealotry as it has been mocked. No zealotry for anyone. You're not over it yet, Josh. Come on. He's digging in. Evan. Evan. Evan <laughs> Bowen. <laughs> I really built that up. Llama Lad. Mike. Spaghetti Jones. Greg Musto. Chris. Hi, first time, long time. Allie Rose. Sprinkle Buns. Sean Aston masters the Gundam Death Scythe Hell Amber by 311 AMV. Damn, Paul, you do that the best. Hilda B. Soggy Newspapers. Chris Kulik. Dakota Kemp. John W. Liam Rogers. Ollie Sutz. Kate the Great. Mike Hart. Saturn Video. Kiwi of Lurve. Serial Killer X. Wade Norcross. Cassandra Harris. Gulliver. That last day was my favorite. That's a nice one. Tip your bartender. Be nice to your name neighbor. Big Nick Lane. Kira and Brian are big fans. Kit Bush. Sarah Sin. Blake Cabin. Cabin? I think Cabin. Wasn't it Blake? Wasn't it Blake? It was. Bad time happened, Cabin. He took the training wheels off once. And, and I crashed. <laughs> I crashed instantly. <laughs> Dennis Wright. Yo, over the moon. <laughs> Dan Antonio. Cameron Gonzaveld. Several upset horses. Jesus. Someone get them some apples. Let them run. Let them free. Matt Septor. Gregor Vasi, a.k.a. Vitizen. Farrah Tilda. Here. Here. <laughs> CM. Paul's Wang does its thing to Sonic's last golden ring. Tonight at 11. Dun -dun. <laughs> Damn. Fuck the last golden ring. How's not whole village gonna survive? It's gonna get fucked too. Oh my god. Anthony Rodriguez. B. Jesse. Chris Curdo. Cole Gleason. Jeff Webb is still a big baby, but we both sincerely appreciate your well wishes. Alpaca acquaintance conveyance abeyance. Ooh, yes. Taraku, the thing that goes doink in the anime. Doink, doink. Jesse Boggs. Michael Malloy. Kyle O'Neill. <laughs> Spencer Y. Robert Holden. 
Goon Cahoots. James Stavranos. Bjarnier. Chris Soul Skater Byers. Fuck yeah. Sick. Grab Comics, what's up? <laughs> Are you still feeling a little little soul skater style there, Chad? Yeah, yeah. You know, I just like rep comics as comics. Cool, man. I'm Anthony Stoker for you. <laughs> Brony underscore Danza. Max. Vunderskin. <sighs> hmm. Paul sentient my buddy <laughs> doll pledges his unholy powers to the enemies of Paul. Wow, a reverse pledge. Whoa, it's a pledge to everyone but you. Is this the, yeah. re- the first reverse pledge? I say, Kevin, you can have the whole doll. Okay, well, I told the doll that you, he can go to you, and now he's just ripped himself in half. You two are my enemies? Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, is that not why we're assembling armies? Oh. Have you not noticed the constant sabotage I've done to you? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a little hurt. <laughs> Hurt, a.k.a. Cyberbully. Girthworm Jim. Science toys. <laughs> nice. Nail it. Larbin, soon to be New Englander. Oh, congrats. Welcome. Talleen Jones. Logan Kilgus. Bosferatu. Starship Nine. Brendan Nichols. Angelo Edward Longton Santone. Smelodies. Proper spaceman, isn't it? <laughs> Bacon the awkwardly unseen. Will Holmes. Caleb Snyder, Grandmaster of Spells and Enchantments, pledges wow. his wizard staff and ancient tome to Paul. I, wow. I search for the spell of doll unbinding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you just said the, ball, the doll free? Now I'm going to unbind it from its soul that's within it. He's always okay. unbinding shit. Just let him do it. Okay. Right. That's why books hate me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a pile of pages. <laughs> Blow away at any time. That makes me really sad. 3 a.m. sleep. Lumo Nuva. Brian Udeth. Rest in peace, Paranoia Shop. You've been you've been dead for about eight years, but still available on streaming services if you want to listen it to it. It has been resting for a long time. JW. Yeah. Rip would like to apologize for his poor taste <laughs> Paranoia Shop joke and respectfully request a mulligan. Granted. Take it. Granted. <laughs> Granted. <laughs> A tall glass of dumb bitch juice. <laughs> L.O.D. Nowhere, Lucas. <gasps> Brian Storo. Psychosis. Kyle Welch. Sterner Stock. Clint Deerking. Agents Miskatonic. C.L. Reagan. Brian Ska. Justin. Shayna S. Welcome to the Book of Names. And hello, the final new name to the Book of Names, Jaybird. Get on in. Tweet, tweet. Which way does your cup turn? <laughs> turn your cups. <laughs> Thank you all. See you next time. We love you. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Melt the ice. Bye. Turn your cup. (laughs) Freeze the ice.